Okay, welcome. Welcome to a reflection today. And I want to talk a little bit today about timetabling and workaholism and just how we can learn to stop. So let's enjoy. So um, just here in my office today, and I've been reading this book, Sad Little Men by Richard Beard over the last uh, couple of weeks and I hopefully will have him on my podcast um, at some point in the, in the future. I have emailed him and we, I'm going to get back in touch with him probably today. But one of the things I was reading in it, this was probably yesterday, um, he talks about this um, idea about kind of timetabling um it be about being occupied so i think timetabling kind of comes from uh, nick duffel's book uh, who i will be speaking to on the 20th of october um and what richard beard says is we need to be kept occupied with little respite from enthusiasm because the worst response was to stand still and feel and this is really powerful i find is that you know, for me at school, there was this timetabling, um, which I, I've done a video before about, you know, what's the, the daily routine of a, a boarding school. And it is, it's go, 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 go. So for me at my school, I went from age 11, we um, would get up at seven and we would then, you know, wash, go for breakfast, 7.30, then afterwards we'd have duties like cleaning tables we always had something to do always had something to do when we were younger after three weeks i was meant to be picked up by my mother on our exiat our leave day my mother's car broke down so i was left at school and everyone else had gone and there was about i don't know 10 14 people left in the school and it was at that point it was i realized and it was almost what Richard Beard saying, the worst response was to stand and feel. And it was at that point, suddenly being on my own, not having anything to do, being in this school, suddenly it seemed like a ghost school. It was at that point, it was like, ah, oh my God. I felt, and I was like, what am I doing? And it kind of gave me an inkling. That totally changed my experience of boarding school from that day onwards. I became much more introverted, became, you know, very withdrawn from people. Those first three weeks at school I enjoyed. Um, but after that, it was like, ah, oh. it was almost like um, when I put this into my book um, about Pleasure Island in Pinocchio, the Disney version, is... Pinocchio sees behind what's happening with the young boys going on to this pleasure island. They're being basically turned into asses, into mules, um, and then being sold. And he sees behind the, the, the workings. It's a bit like, you know, going off to Disneyland. Again, seeing behind the, um, uh, you know, the rides, you know, the... The workings rather than it being lovely splashing lights it's like oh it's just mechanics so i'm rambling a little bit what i wanted to say is that because we have this timetabling we're always doing we're always doing when we leave school we still have that same momentum and what we really need to start doing is to stand still and feel now, that's something that I did in my 20s in the monastery. But at the beginning, it was hellish to try and stop. I was a workaholic. I just couldn't stop. So I trained myself to just sit, to put my alarm on for 10, 20 minutes, and I wouldn't move. And I'd want to get up, and I'd want to, you know, and I'd give myself a point to focus on the wall. I'd breathe, and I'd want to move. And this is something I found to be really really useful you can do that throughout your work day maybe every hour I recommend certainly once an hour having a break and go outside 
Or, you know, if you're in an office and you can't go out, then find a point on the computer or on the wall and just sit and just kind of look at that. So if, it, if you're in an office with other people, if you look at an item or you look at a point, maybe it's the Windows icon um, on your computer screen, when people come past, it doesn't look like you're just sitting there meditating. Um, and I found that's really helped me to stop my workaholism um, with that. Um, yeah, because I feel at school we were shamed for feeling. If you showed anger or if you showed tears or if you showed, <gasps> you know, sadness or depression, it was like you were laughed at, you were mocked. You know, and I, as I've shared in many of my videos, it's this um, flatlining. We couldn't be too up. You couldn't be too excited. It wasn't, yeah, this is great. You know, in my school, it was you were called gay if you showed too much exuberance and you couldn't be too depressed or you couldn't be too extreme with your emotion. Then, you know, as again, as Richard Beard says, I think it's in another bit. Um, as he said. Yeah, denial was how we survived, belittling our emotional experiences. So it's like we denied, so we denied these ones, so we brought it back up to the level. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I feel we can heal these things. You know, I love that we have mindfulness, we have meditation now. Um, it's like we have to often timetabling, we, we disappear into our heads and I feel trauma, we disappear into our heads. It's returning back into our bodies, feeling them. And I remember speaking to a friend uh, who I was I lived as a monastic with. He's still a monk. And he was saying that when he first started to meditate, the meditation instruction was feel into your body. And he was like, I can't feel anything. So this is part of our kind of healing from trauma is start to inhabit our bodies again. You know, we can do that through the breath through you know something like having a cold bath you know something where you can you know maybe it's just touching you know and if it feels really uncomfortable to do that to breathe deeply and if there's grief you know giving ourselves that space giving yourself that space to feel um, so I think that's where what I'd like to do is yeah so I think moving forward is you know put time in for breaks you know, put time in to just stop, do that exercise. Um, just notice where you are timetabling and be gentle. It's like, oh, yeah, OK, <laughs> my day is totally filled, you know. And I see the Western society is very much that, especially as we managed to drop a lot of things in lockdown last year and over the, the winter. And now suddenly it's certainly in the, um, in the UK, things have got busy. Everyone's you know, really timetabled. So it's just allowing things to drop. So, yeah, uh, I wanted to also say thank you to everybody for your support, for um, going onto my website at peers-cross.com forward slash peers-book um, and putting your email address in there for my boarding school syndrome book. I've got about 50 people have said they were interested there. And if you've not done that so far, you want to support me, as in me going to the um, to the publishers saying, look, I have this many people. It would be great if I had 100, 200 people to go there with them uh, to say, look, I, I've got these people interested in it. Um, that would be wonderful. But thank you very much for that. Um, and, yeah, I'll let you know about Nick Duffel and hopefully Richard Beard. And if you have questions for them, you know, please do share them. Um, so, yeah. Many blessings, have a wonderful week, and yeah, if there's anything you'd like me to cover, you know, I have <laughs> lots of quotes, uh, I think I've got 20 pages that I've been putting into my book, um, so <laughs> lots of them there, so yeah, many blessings, have a great week.